the major function of the electron transport chain is to actually generate these high energy ATP molecules via oxidative phosphorylation of ADP molecules and this takes place on the electron transport chain of the inner mitochondrial membrane. And what this basically means is for the electron transport chain to actually take place and take place effectively and efficiently inside the matrix of the mitochondria we must have a high enough level of ADP molecules because the electron transport chain, more specifically, ATP synthase of the electron transport chain actually generates those ATP molecules by using the ADP molecules. So for the electron transport chain to be effective, ADP levels in the mitochondrial membrane must be appropriately high to ensure that complex 5 ATP synthase of the electron transport chain can actually use the proton motive force that is generated by complexes 1, 3, and 4 to generate those ATP molecules. Now, it also actually means that once we form these ATP molecules, we don't want to keep those ATP molecules in the matrix of the mitochondria. We want to actually move those ATP molecules out of the matrix and into the cytoplasm of the cell so that the ATP can become readily available to actually power all the different types of biological processes that exist within the cytoplasm of the cell. Now, the problem with actually transporting ADP and ATP molecules across the inner mitochondrial membrane is the membrane is impermeable to these two molecules. Why? Well, because ADP contains a charge of negative 3, while ATP contains a charge of negative 4. So both of these molecules are highly charged species. And what that means is they can't simply diffuse across the inner membrane of the mitochondria. And their movement across the inner membrane of the mitochondria basically depends on the existence of a special type of anti-porter transport system, an exchange protein molecule known as ATP-ADP translocase. And what this molecule does is it basically catalyzes the movement, it couples the import of the ADP into the matrix to the export of the ATP out of that matrix. And this is the net reaction that is catalyzed by ATP-ADP translocase. So within the matrix of the mitochondria, we essentially generate these ATP molecules and that means we use up the ADP molecules. So we want to actually move the ATP out of the matrix while at the same time we want to bring ADP from the cytoplasm into the matrix. So at the same time that the ATP moves out of the matrix into the cytoplasm, the ADP is brought from the cytoplasm and into the matrix so that oxidative phosphorylation of the ADP can take place along the electron transport chain found in the inner membrane of the mitochondria. Now, before we actually take a look at the mechanism by which ATP, ADP translocase actually functions, let's discuss what the structure of ATP, ADP translocase actually is. Well, this is a homodimer molecule and what that means is it consists of two identical polypeptide chains and each one of these identical polypeptide chains consists of six alpha helices that span the membrane. And these two identical polypeptide subunits basically work together to create this conformation in which we have a binding pocket that can bind ADP and ATP. And this binding pocket actually alternates between facing the matrix side and facing the cytoplasmic side, as we'll see in just a moment. So, because along the inner membrane of the mitochondria, we have the electron transport chain, which actually functions to generate these ATP molecules from ADP molecules, we might imagine that the inner mitochondrial membrane contains a relatively high concentration of this specific translocase, and that's exactly right. So about 15% of the protein content of the inner mitochondrial membrane consists of ATP-ADP translocase. 
So now let's take a look at the following mechanism by which the ATP ADP translocase actually moves these two molecules across the inner mitochondrial membrane. And let's begin with this diagram here. So we have the inner mitochondrial membrane, the matrix side, and the intermembrane side, also known as the cytoplasm side. So basically, in step one, the binding pocket that is formed by these two polypeptide chains that make up the ATP-ADP translocase is open to the cytoplasm side. Now, this molecule with a negative three charge, that's the ADP, and it moves into this pocket. And once it moves into the pocket, it creates a conformational change that essentially stimulates a process we call eversion. And in, and in this process, the binding pocket basically everts, and now it faces not the cytoplasm side, but the matrix side. So what that means is this ADP molecule can now move into the matrix of the mitochondria. Now, once this ADP moves out of that binding pocket, an ATP shown in blue with a negative four charge can actually move into this pocket. Once it moves into the pocket, another eversion takes place opposite to the one that took place here. So now that the face, the binding pocket faces uh, the cytoplasm side and not the matrix side. So now once this takes place, the ATP can leave this binding pocket, enter the intermembrane space and then move into the cytoplasm via a protein found on the outer membrane of the mitochondria known as the mitochondrial porin. And once we get to this stage, the cycle can basically repeat itself. Now, one last thing I'd like to mention about the movement of these ADP ATP molecules is the following. Remember that because the electron transport chain actually generates an electrochemical gradient for the protons, what that does is it creates a net positive charge on the outside portion of the inner membrane and a negative charge on the inner portion of the inner mitochondrial membrane. Now, ATP molecules have a greater charge than ADP molecules. ATP have a net charge of negative four, while ADP have a net charge of negative three. And so what that means is, because the ATP have a greater negative charge, that greater negative charge on the ATP will promote the movement of these more negatively charged molecules onto the side of the membrane that contains a positive charge, and that's the cytoplasmic side. So what that implies is the greater negative charge on the ATP molecules actually promotes the movement of these ATP across the inner mitochondrial membrane onto this intermembrane side because it's the side that contains a greater concentration of protons, so that means it has a greater positive charge.